Thank you for joining WBC's signature Impact Talk. We're going to be focused on Latina leadership. I'm Esther Aguilera, Senior Advisor at Altura Capital and a proud board member of the Women Business Collaborative. So why is this talk so important? Did you know there is a big mismatch between the aspirations of Latinas, of Latina professionals, and where they land today? So McKinsey's annual report, Women in the Workforce, found that 41% of Latinas and women of color aspire to top executive positions. It compares with 27% of white women who have those aspirations. Um, yet overall of the 25% of women in C-suites, only 5% are women of color and of those 1% of Latinas. But guess what? We have an opportunity. You know, as we at WBC and all of us here are working towards equity from the current 75% of men in the C-suite and 25% of women, you know, we have an opportunity to lift up Latinas and women of color who clearly are saying, give me an opportunity to compete. Give me the tools so that I can contribute and, you know, live up to my aspirations, live up to my potential. So, um, they're asking for this, and we have that opportunity as we continue to do this movement to advance all women. So uh, Latinos are the second largest cohort in the population. So that makes Latinas 20% uh, of all US women and 10% of the entire US population. So for my panel, how can we get to the point where Latinas are 10% of C-suite? Let's, you know, with me to unpack the status of Latina leadership are Patricia Mota. She's CEO and president of the Hispanic Alliance for uh, Enhancement, a Latina membership and leadership organization. Jackie Puente. She is vice president external affairs at Comcast NBC Universal and Sid Wilson, CEO and president of the Hispanic Association of Corporate Responsibility. So we have this dynamic impact uh, chat. Sid, let's start with you. What is the business case and what is the might of Latinas in the U.S. economy? Um, well, well, thank you, Esther. And of course, um, um, you know, bueno, buenas tardes if you're on the East Coast, buenos dias if you're on the uh, Midwest or West Coast. Uh, so great to be here with our, with our friends at the Women Business Collaborative, a great organization we collaborate with for many years. So when we talk about the business case for Latinas, um, it's understanding that um, we know that according to our friends at the Latino Donor Collaborative, um, the Latinos in general are the fifth largest economy in the world. But if you actually disaggregate that and just figure out what will be the estimated Latina um, uh, GDP, it's going to be somewhere uh, in the 1.5 or so trillion dollars, which makes Latinas alone somewhere around the 11th to 12th maybe, uh, economy in the world. That's significant. That means that American Latinas would be a G20 country. But yet, despite that, we know that um, Latinas are not getting the same level of sponsorship that their white male counterparts are getting when you get into these senior and executive roles. The big challenge is that uh, in, in this environment, it's, uh, you know, when you show your resume, uh, we show you a mid-level manager job. But when we show you sponsorship, we get the C-suite. And then when we show you credibility, it gets you the board seat. And so we know that um, that credibility is still a very male paradigm, which does not factor in the inclusiveness. And, and I love how you that said that, Sid. Yeah. I love that because... That's one of the key tools we're going to need to tackle here. Yes. Patricia, let's go to you. Tell us what are the gaps in pay and other measures for Latinas? And what are Latinas experiencing in the workplace? Yeah, Esther, thank you to you and the WBC for, for the invitation to join you all today. Today, proud partner. Uh, I, I serve as the president and CEO of ASA, so the Hispanic Alliance for Career Enhancement, but also I'm a co-founder for Sheenex, which is a fintech that's aimed to close 
the pay gap, eliminate the pay gap, close the wealth gap, uh, providing culturally relevant uh, financial education from budgeting to investment, starting with Latinas. Because as Sid mentioned, Latinas control the majority of the spend here that the U.S. Hispanic spend and the GDP in their households, making key decisions as it pertains to finances, health care, and so many, many other um, areas. This year, Latina Equal Pay Day is on October 5th, meaning that it takes up until October 5th for uh, that Latina to get paid what her white male counterpart last year got paid uh, on average 50 cents to the dollar uh, for full time working Latinas. Uh, and that's a loss of potential wealth of a million in her lifetime, which not only impacts her, uh, her family, the, the communities and, and so, uh, society at large, you, you look at the, the ripple effect and, and the growth of this community. It's an economic imperative that we ensure Latinas are paid equitably, um, not only closing that pay gap, but accelerating what, what's old. And so it, there's there's a business imperative in terms of what companies, organizations need to do. And there's also the imperative for us as Latinas, being a proud Latina, Mexican-American daughter of immigrants here to the U.S., that we need to do for ourselves to make sure we're advocating, we're getting comfortable speaking up, knowing the research and private, finding the right mentors and sponsors to support us uh, within our organizations as well. Um, I mean, the other key thing is that Latinas are opening businesses six times faster than any other population. Uh, and, and that's huge as well, but also because a lot of them are leaving corporate America as well. Thank you. And there's so much talent. I appreciate all of that, Patricia. Mm -hmm. Jackie, so how important is this segment for Comcast? And, and I've seen you and other Latinas advance in Comcast. What are those strategies? So I think we've heard it from the data from Sid and from Tricia. And, and first of all, thank you, Esther, for including me on this important topic. Um, you know, it's Hispanic Heritage Month, and we're having this conversation, I think, in so many important forums, but we can't say it enough, right? Companies um, that are doing well know that Latina leaders are a critical element to their strategy to build market share, to retain market share. Um, if you know a Latina, you know that she's in charge, whether it's of her household, her small business, the team that she's running, she's the backbone of what, what is happening um, at home and in the office and in the community, quite frankly. So it's so important that we think about how we build strategies to be inclusive and think through how that can help project where companies want to go. And at Comcast, you know, we're, I'm very fortunate to work with an amazing team of Latina leaders across all of our family of brands, whether it's um, in our Xfinity or in um, Comcast Corporate or NBC Universal and Telemundo. Um, one thing I'll add, and I, and I hope we'll dig into this a little bit more, we talk so much about the ecosystem where, where people are coming from, and there's so much data um, that reinforces these, these points. But I think we should also think about this from the internal and external standpoints. Right, externally, what can we do to support that sponsorship that Sid talked about? How do we really help build the ladders and the relationships that make people um, get the opportunities that they that they deserve? Um, but internally, also encouraging women, and I think this is this is a huge challenge, right? Encouraging women to speak up. Our resumes are just as good. You see women in college more than male counterparts now. You see more Latinas in college than Latinos. You see the opportunity for women to really be their own advocates and to get out of their own way. Um, when it comes time to establishing their chart for advancement. And you know, WBC is about collaboration. Our motto is faster together. And so, you know, for this, uh, you know, closing round here of questions, you know, what is the one thing that women and others in the audience can do to support Latinas? Um, to advance them in their journeys and, and how can they work with some of your organizations? Because again, we're gonna do this together and this is such an important audience to hear this important message. Uh, let's let's start with you, Jackie, then uh, Patricia and Sid. Let's keep it to like one quick, what is what can others, how can they support Latinas? I think building a network and raising your hand, right? I have found myself, and um, in addition to my work at Comcast, I'm chair elect for the US Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And not to get into the whole story, but um, when the opportunity came to run for that role on the board, I thought to myself, do I have the time to do this? I have a very busy job, I have a very busy family. You know, I'm involved in many organizations and, and, um, and I was the one getting in my own way, right? But I was having the community of support where people said, you should do this, raise your hand um, and, and give it your best shot. 
You know, if I was, someone said to me very, very smartly, if you were a man, you wouldn't be worried about all of these things in the background. If you were, you know, you'd be saying, oh, my wife will take care of this, or you know, my partner will do this for me. I think it's so important that we support each other and look for opportunities where we can um, put a highlight on people's talents um, and the special gifts that they can bring and the insight, I think, for the market in particular. I love that. Let's share those opportunities and make sure that just let's not assume that Latinas have them in front of them. Uh, Patricia. I, I love that, Jackie. I, I think the, the example I'll give and building off of what Jackie just mentioned is building that uh, community. I, I, I love to say that dreams truly flourish when you cultivate them with community. And AS is one, ASED, you know, the USHCC is another organization. Um, our Mujeres de ASED program is our Latina leadership program that consistently um, we've seen that 80% within less than a year are going back, getting a promotion at work, um, you know, 70% that are now a bit more visible in the workplace in terms of getting more opportunities and, and leadership roles. And it really, it's been that empowerment, that, that community where we have Latina leaders like Jackie coming in, sharing their story and their experiences that then empowers them to be able to be more confident in going back into the workplace. And so looking for those culturally relevant um, organizations, opportunities, programs to be able to really um, engage and, and to empower our Latinas to, um, to, un to unleash their power and their potential that they already have within. Sid, you mentioned sponsorship. How else can others, how can we bridge the gaps and, and, and bridge uh, communities so that we're bringing, it's not just about Latinas supporting Latinas, how are we going to get other, what can white women do, what can other women do, what do you think? Um, and I'll, I'll answer that very briefly. One is uh, building on the sponsorship, sponsor Latinas in the office and outside the office because we know that companies do a lot of internal and external engagements. Sponsor your Latinas to go to big industry conferences with your leaders. Build those allyships that'll create those relationships and will lead to sponsorship. And then the last part is everyone needs to embrace Latina acculturation at the executive level, not assimilating into an existing white male centric culture that does not support uh, the ability for Latinas to bring their full authentic selves into the workplace. It's acculturation, not assimilation, sponsorship inside the office and outside the office. Yeah, you know, our superpower is our culture because we bring a, a new perspective, you know, and I would say, you know, Latinas, we want a shot uh, and the tools to compete. You know, we know that when Latinas are given that opportunity, they shine, they thrive, and they bring everyone else, you know, with them. So that's why this is so important. That's why this conversation is so important. And, and that's why, you know, WBC, I really appreciate that this is a, a key feature, not only during Hispanic Heritage Month, but throughout the year to what we do with the organization and partnering with so many of you here. Just one last word for Latinas. What can, what is the a Latina superpower that you would say? One superpower. Sid. Um, resilient, impactful, powerful. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie. Inclusion. Companies are always talking now about inclusion and belonging. And as leaders of our families, as leaders of our teams, we do this naturally. We understand bringing people together gets more done. And no better examples than you and Patricia. Oh, I would add empathy in terms of which it helps us build more inclusive spaces, making sure that we're bringing others along. Um, and, and, you know, the humility piece, which to Sid's earlier point, right, it's not about it's that's that's a superpower that we have, but knowing when we have to shift in order to assert ourselves to influence and to communicate, but that's a beautiful value and a trait that we bring to the table. Absolutely. And we also have the, um, you know, the, the qualities of real, you know, unity and wanting to bridge gaps. So that's, that's what we're here to do. And then again, with uh, WBC, we want to try and do more of these conversations, really bring this to the forefront. I really want to thank you for being part of this and thank WBC, Gwen, Gwen Young, our dynamic CEO, for doing such a phenomenal job today. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for watching. Great. Thank you. Muchas gracias.